Hello there, you're watching Nightline with me, Anita Wu. The top stories. Leaders should fight for race, religion and country, not position, says PM. And water supply in Selangor and Kuala Lumpur to be fully restored on Wednesday. We begin with our headlining story. Leaders should fight for race, religion and the country, not their personal interest or political positions. Tun Dr. Mayade said this, said those that once fought for those causes are now seen as fighting for themselves. Speaking of his time when he was once UMNO's president, the Prime Minister said UMNO party leaders discouraged those who were smarter than them from joining the party. <laughs> Pemimpin UMNO yang menjadi ketua cawangan tidak begitu berminat untuk melihat orang lain yang lebih cekap daripadanya menyertai parti dalam cawangan. Ketua cawangan tidak membenarkan orang yang lebih pandai daripadanya menyertai parti. He was speaking as the chairman of the Parti Pribumi Bersatu Malaysia, or Bersatu, during its extraordinary general meeting on Saturday. Tun Dr. Mahathir also warned Bersatu members not to be like UMNO members and to fight for party interest instead. Otherwise, the people will reject them. More than 1,200 delegates from all over the country attended the EGM. It was called to amend the party constitution relating to its election process. Tun Dr. Mahathir said the amendments were done to strengthen the structure of the party. At the same press conference, Tun Dr. Mahathir also said there is a possibility that the party's inaugural election will be held this year. Uh, we have not fixed the date, but we hope to do, be able to do it this year. On June 27th, Tun Mahathir reportedly said the party's election should be held as soon as possible since its current administration comprised leaders who have been appointed. Meanwhile, Brasato Deputy President Datuk Sri Mukris Mahathir explained that with the approval of the AGM on Saturday, it is allowed to postpone party elections for up to 18 months from the date they were due. Mukris said the Supreme Council will decide for whatever reason they want to postpone it, either by 18 months or six months. Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad's approval rating has steadily improved after hitting an all-time low of 46% in March this year, according to a survey by independent pollster Merdeka Center. The Prime Minister's approval rating improved to 55% in May and to 62% as of last month. Tun Dr. Mahathir's improved approval rating comes on the back of Malay and Chinese voters who have once again warmed up to the Langkawi MP. Satisfaction towards Tun Dr. Mahathir among Malay voters was at 50% as of June, a 16% improvement from March. Likewise, satisfaction amongst Chinese voters improved by 16% to 77% within the same period. However, satisfaction amongst Indian voters declined 6% from 80% in March to 74% in June. Meanwhile, Pakatan Harapan's approval rating stood at 41% in May and remained the same in June. As of June, 40% of voters thought the country is moving in the right direction, an improvement of 6% from March. The top three reasons cited for the improved sentiment towards the government are good administration, the fight against corruption and improvement of the economy. Fitch's reaffirmation of Malaysia's A rating and a similar rating by S&P Global show credit rating agencies are convinced of the government's institutional reforms. Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng said Malaysia has surprised sceptics who expected a downgrade due to legacy issues from the previous government. 
In a statement on Saturday, Lim said the development was attributed to the institutional reforms implemented by the current government to enhance fiscal transparency and to address high-profile corruption cases. He also cited improvements to Malaysia's press freedom and ease of doing business. The finance minister said Fitch's reaffirmation also proves the increase in direct debt had no adverse impact when the government's overall debt and liabilities have been reduced as a percentage of the gross domestic product GDP. He added that Fitch believes the government's debt level relative to the GDP will gradually decrease over the next few years due to its clear fiscal consolidation plan. He stressed that another positive indicator for the Malaysian economy is the World Bank's projection that it will expand 4.6% this year, along with a growth in wholesale and retail trade in the first five months of the year. He pointed out that low inflation enjoyed by Malaysian consumers is sustaining strong consumption growth. In May, the Consumer Price Index increased only marginally by 0.2% year-on-year, which is unchanged from the previous month. The unemployment rate has fallen to 3.3% in the same month versus 3.4% in April. He said such positive developments point towards a sustainable GDP growth for the second quarter of 2019. The government, Lim added, will continue to pursue institutional reforms, maintain political stability and manage the reduction of debt and liabilities. A proposal on firemen's critical allowance will be presented to the king next week. According to Housing and Local Government Minister Zoraida Kamarudin, the allowance is in recognition of the work firemen do in facing disasters as they put themselves at risk while on duty. Dan namun demikian tadi Agong pun sebut juga dengan saya, dia kata macam mana ketika allowance, saya kata belum lagi dapat diluluskan. Jadi Agong minta satu paper, satu paper ringkas untuk dibentangkan kepada beliau dan untuk beliau juga mungkin nak juga main peranan untuk bekas beliau lihat anggota bumbu ini adalah frontline. Jadi semoga-moga semoga dengan adanya apa ni. Uh, cadangan ataupun sokongan daripada Yang Pertuan Agong, uh, kerajaan akan dapat pertimbangkanlah untuk meluluskan critical allowance ni. So bila uh, YB nak serahkan paper? Immediately. Immediately minggu depan. Ya? <laughs> minggu depan. Agong. <laughs> minggu depan. <laughs> Saya tak boleh tengok tangguh lagi. <laughs> Surida said this to media at the World International Firefighters Day celebration in Kuala Lumpur on Saturday. At the moment, policemen and soldiers were also given such allowances. In her speech at the event, Zoraida said the Fire and Rescue Department receives 110,150 emergency calls last year, which translated to 302 calls daily. She also said losses from property destruction due to fire last year stood at 3.3 billion ringgit, compared to 5.2 billion ringgit in year 2017. Earlier, the Yang Dibetuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Rayatuddin Al Mustafa Billah Shah officiated the World International Firefighters Day celebration that was held at Dataran Merdeka. Sultan Abdullah, accompanied by the Raja Promissory Agong Tunku Aziza Aminah Maimuna Iskandaria, were greeted on arrival by Housing and Local Government Minister Zuraida Kamaruddin. Among the highlights of the event were a poetry recital and a special demonstration by the Special Tactical Operation and Rescue Malaysia, or STORM team. The crowd was also enthralled by a parade by several contingents under the department and private agencies, namely the Hazardous Materials Team, HAZMAT, and Chemical, Biological, Radiological, Nuclear and Explosives and Water Rescue Unit. Some 60% of the 1.2 million ratepayers in Kuala Lumpur and Selangor affected by Friday's water cut following the emergency shutdown of four treatment plants in Sungai Selangor have had their water supply restored. Syarikat Bekalan Air Selangor Syndrome Barahad Shabas in a statement on Saturday said 67% of the 1,191,942 accounts have had their water supply restored. According to Aislangu Chief Executive Officer Suhaimi Kamar Al Zaman, water supply in Kuala Lumpur, Petaling, Klang, Shah Alam, Kuala Selangor, Hulu Selangor, Gomba, and Kuala Langat have been gradually restored beginning Saturday noon. The restoration, he said, follows the reopening of the treatment plants on Sungai Selangor after they had been shut down due to the presence of odor pollution. Berdasarkan status pemulihan terkini, pihak kami menyasarkan pemulihan bekalan. Air sepenuhnya bagi wilayah-wilayah terlibat adalah seperti berikut. Kuala Lumpur pada 23 Julai 2019 selasa 12 tengah hari. Petaling pada 24 Julai 2019 Rabu 12 tengah hari. Kelang dan Syah Alam 
24 Julai 2019 Rabu 12.30 hari Kuala Selangor 21 Julai 2019 Ahad 12.30 hari Gombak 22 Julai 2019 Isnin 12.30 hari Kuala Langat 24 Julai 2019 Rabu 12.30 hari it was earlier reported that more than one million ratepayers in the two states would be affected by disruptions to their water supply due to odor pollution in Sungai Selangor. The odor pollution resulted in Sungai Selangor Phase 1, Phase 2 and Phase 3 water treatment plants, as well as the Rantau Panjang treatment plant downstream, to be shut down. Rao have said that relief water supply via tankers shall continue to be mobilized to the affected areas. Police have arrested another two suspects in connection with the sex video allegedly implicating a cabinet minister. Inspector General of Police, Datuk Sri Abdul Hamid Badur, said the two were arrested in Shah Alam on Friday. The IGP told the media that investigations into the case is still ongoing and that they are still in the midst of recording statements and taking action. Hence, he said there is always the possibility that more arrests would be made. Datuk Sri Abdul Hamid also said the case was a huge waste of police time. Mula saya dah beritahu bahawa oleh kerana sensitivity, sensitivity isu ini begitu tinggi sekali, menarik minat ramai lah khususnya di kalangan orang-orang politik ni. Ya. Pelbagai desakan diberikan kepada dikenakan ke atas saya. Ya. Orang politik di luar ni bukan dalam kerajaan ataupun uh, pucuk apa ni pimpinan kerajaan tidak ada menekan saya apa-apa. Tapi di luar ni menekan saya sebagai ketua perintis negara dengan pelbagai-bagai ni lah mendesak saya mengeluarkan kenyataan tulen tak tulen tulen tak tulen. Itu bukan kerja saya. The IGP earlier attended the closing ceremony of the National Police Cadets Camping Event at Kembina Semangat in Kuala Kubu Baru, Selangor on Saturday. Meanwhile, Parti Kadilan Rakyat PKR President Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim said the party welcomed a statement made by the IGP that the identities of the two men in the viral sex video could not be fully ascertained. In addition to that, Datuk Sri Anwar also expressed his relief that PKR Deputy President Datuk Sri Azmin Ali is not involved in the sex video. Sambil mengambil maklum bahawa siasatan polis masih berjalan, keadilan keadilan mengambil maklum kenyataan Ketua Polis Negara semalam dan menerima baik kenyataan Ketua Polis Negara bahawa Timbalan Presiden Keadilan Saudara Azmin Ali tidak terlibat dalam video yang tersebar baru-baru ini. He said this during a media conference held at the PKR's Central Leadership Council retreat in Port Dixon, Negeri Sembilan, on Saturday. On whether the latest development will put to rest calls for Datuk Sri Azmin to resign from his post in the party, Datuk Sri Anwar said the party will not make any decision until the police report is concluded. The PKR president also said that the party will not tolerate and will take stern action if there are members of the party or political party leaders involved in the distribution of the sex video. At the same media conference, Datuk Sri Anwar also stressed that he will heed the advice of PKR members and refrain from making any statements on the party until he has gathered views from all quarters at the three-day leadership retreat. He also said that he would obey the request by members and only speak to the media on Sunday. <laughs> Patuh kepada pandangan mereka. Mereka kata sampai habis diteri, tengah pandangan, baru kita buat ulasan. Jadi sekarang giliran pimpinan semua boleh buat kenyataan. Tapi tidak ada tidak hari ini. Esok selesai. The Kelantan Palace has finally confirmed the divorce of the Sultan of Kelantan through a letter sent by His Majesty's lawyer. In a shortly worded letter, it said Sultan Muhammad Kalima had divorced Rihanna Oksana Gorbatenko on 22nd June in accordance with Sharia laws. It added that Kelantan Sharia Court has issued a divorce certificate dated July 1st. The law firm Eversheds Harry Elias LLP, based in Singapore, has also advised the public to respect the privacy of His Majesty.
John Dr. Made Mohammed has expressed his condolences to family members of Cesar Peyi, the architect behind the Petronas Twin Towers, who died on Friday. In a 30-second video, the Prime Minister said he was saddened by the death of the Argentinian architect, who had translated his idea into an iconic national landmark. I feel sad to hear the news of the passing away of the great architect who designed the Twin Towers in Malaysia, Mr. Cesar Pelli of Argentina, who was from New York when he came here to design this iconic uh, building in Malaysia. I have my condolences to the family of Cesar Pelli. Argentina's Telam State News Agency reported his death on Friday, as did the governor of Tucumán province, where Pei grew up and spent his formative years. His death at age 92 marked the passing of one of the world's contemporary architectural greats. One of Pei's most prolific designs, the 88-story Petronas Twin Towers, was completed in 1998 and was dubbed the tallest building in the world from 1998 to year 2004 at 452 metres tall. In Berlis, police detained a woman, 40, and her 15-year-old son for allegedly abusing a 14-year-old teenage girl who has a learning disability in Kampung Gialtunga, Arau. Perlis Police Chief SAC Noor Musha Mohammed said police picked up the two family members after a report was lodged over a video recording that went viral on Twitter. He said the 40-year-old woman and her son were arrested at about 11.45 a.m. on Saturday and police will obtain an order to remand them on Sunday. Preliminary investigations found that the girl was believed to have been beaten up as there were injuries and bruises on her back, left wrist and neck. In Malacca, Village Community Management Council MPKK chairman was remanded for four days at the Ayakura court complex for allegedly molesting an Indonesian maid last Monday. The four-day remand order against the 51-year-old, starting Saturday, was issued by Magistrate Tio Shu Yi. The case is being investigated under Section 448 and 354 of the Penal Code, respectively. We're back with the eSports segment, bringing you the latest news on Malaysian eSports and gaming. Gamers can now rejoice as the first ever Mobile Legends Bang Bang MLBB World Championship will be held very soon. Also known as M1, the highly anticipated event was unveiled by the creator of the iconic mobile game Moon Ton at its first ever global conference in Kuala Lumpur recently. The developer also treated fans to a few surprise announcements, including a revamp of the popular multiplayer online battle arena game. Our trainee reporter, Nur Fatima Zahra Ahmad, has the details. Welcome to Mobile Legends! According to Moon Ton, at its Epicon 2019 on Thursday, the international tournament will be held at the Asiata Arena from November 11th until 14th. It will see 16 teams from over 14 countries battling for the glory of becoming the first MLBB world champion and grabbing the Lions' share of 250,000 US dollar prize pool. This announcement was seen as a significant milestone for Malaysia as it will enhance the country's position as an esports powerhouse, attracting talented gamers from all over the world. Mobile Legends now has been launched 139 countries since its first launch in 2016. And now we have achieved 500 million downloads and about 75 million monthly active users. It's a big milestone for us. This was not the only things that fans were excited about, as Moonton also announced MLBB 2.0, an updated version of its most popular game, which will be released to the masses very soon, with new heroes and other new exciting features. We changed the whole thing. It looks cleaner, more minimalist, and also it looks more soothing. The blue and the gold, yeah, that's the main thing. And of course, we have 
map upgrades. Much cooler maps, much nicer maps, and also upcoming heroes. You guys, stay tuned. There's many more to come and many more to announce. The game's sequel, Mobile Legends Adventure, an exciting idle RPG strategy card game, will also be available to gamers from August 1st. Not only that, Moonton also is working closely with a number of companies, including Facebook and fast food chains, as well as content creators as part of its marketing strategy. So we work with uh, Facebook creators, which is the streamers and influencers, and we provide them with in-game stream rewards. And we found out that the result is really good, whereby the engagement is increased, the watch hours is double up. Now, according to Moonton, they are expecting 5 million active players playing Mobile Legends by the end of the year. Now, those are some serious numbers, and they hope that the new version will keep the current players and maybe turning you into a gamer. The company is also expecting a 15% increase in active players with the release of MLBB 2.0 and aims to expand the Mobile Legends world through comics, animations, movies, merchandising and many more. As for fans, they are certainly excited about all the announcements, especially on the MLBB World Championship. I think the biggest part that I like the most is that they are finally actually doing a World Championship for Mobile Legends, which I've been waiting for quite some time. Uh, I can't really wait to see um, you know, which region you know, will be supreme for it. So yeah, that's among the things I'm really looking forward to. For. Other highlights at Global Conference include dance and cosplay performances, as well as lucky draws. It has now reached the top 10 mobile games ranking in more than 80 countries and localized in 25 different languages. Nur Fatima Zara Ahmad for Nightline TV3. Next, Iran opens probe into seized British flagged tanker. The details after this break. We're back with foreign news now. Iran opened an investigation on Saturday into a seized British flagged tanker. It alleges collided with a fishing vessel in the Strait of Hormuz as tensions mount in the strategic waterway. The Revolutionary Guard Corps said it seized the Stena Impero on Friday for breaking international maritime rules in the Strait. The tanker was impounded off Bandar Abbas port with all its crew for allegedly failing to respond to distress calls and turning off its transponder after colliding with a fishing vessel. Britain, meanwhile, warned Iran of serious consequences if it does not release the tanker and orders its ships to avoid the crucial shipping lanes of the Straits of Hormuz. The seizure comes just two weeks after the UK seized an Iranian cargo ship travelling through the Straits of Gibraltar. In China, the death toll from a gas plant explosion in the Henan province rose to 12 people on Saturday. Another 13 people were seriously injured, while three others remain missing, as a search and rescue operation is still underway. According to the local authorities, the explosion occurred in the state-owned Henan Coal Gas Facility's air separation unit at around 5.30 p.m. on Friday. The blast in the city of Yima reportedly shattered windows within the three-kilometer radius and knocked off doors inside buildings. All production at the site has been stopped and authorities have launched an investigation to determine the cause of the incident.
Up next, the Super League. Solongo moves a step closer to finish third. Stay tuned. Kami ingin menjemput anda untuk menunaikan umrah bersama Al-Quds Umrah and Tours dengan harga promosi serendah RM5490. Hotel dekat, harga jimat. Hubungi 01505057000. Layari alkudstravel.com. Back with sports news now, football of the 2019 Super League. Two matches were played on Saturday night. Pahang thrashed Malacca United 4-1 at the Darul Makmur Stadium. In Shah Alam, only miracles could stop Selangor from finishing the Ali campaign in third spot following a 3-2 win over PKNS FC. Romel Morales gave PKNS FC the lead after just three minutes before Sandro De Silva equalised for the Red Giants in the 39th minute. Ife Dayo Olesegun then gave the advantage to Selango two minutes before the break. Olesegun grabbed his second of the night seven minutes into the second half to make it 3-1. Piquenas pulled one back in the 77th minute with Amir Langozubev, but it was not enough to prevent Selango from claiming the maximum three points. With the win, Selango now stands in third with 37 points, three points above Kada, which has a game in hand. Kedah needs to win their last game with at least six goals to leapfrog Selangor and finish the campaign in third. Looks like that's it for Nightline this time around. As we wrap, we leave you with visuals of Europe's highest volcano. That's Mount Etna in southern Italy that burst into life with explosions, spewing lava and smoke, forcing the closure of two airports nearby the area. With that, I'm Anita Wu. Thank you for your company and take care. Have a restful Sunday ahead. <laughs>